Hello guys, it is Gative Theories here, and unless you have been living under a rock for the past few weeks, you will have definitely heard of the Netflix show Squid Game. This show has literally been everywhere, all over the world, and it is so, so popular. So today, I thought we'd do a tier list on all of the different games that Squid Game is about. There will be spoilers for Squid Game if you haven't seen the full series. If you haven't, I definitely recommend you go and check it out, and then come back to this video. And guys, if you want to check out this tier list for yourself, there'll be a link down below in the description. And also, make sure that you've clicked that red subscribe button down below and have your notifications turned on, so that you get notified every time I make any brand new TLS videos. So here I am on my Squid Game tier list. Now of course there are only six games that the characters have to play in Squid Game, but you'll notice there are actually nine, I think, different versions on here. And that's because there are throughout the show times where games happen that aren't official games or scenarios take place where people can easily be eliminated, even though they're not technically part of an official game. So I've decided to add them in as well. So let's start off with the first game, Dutch Key. Now this is of course the first game that the characters ever Ever play in the first game where we ever see 456 actually play and it's basically where they play this game and then they sign up for the full experience at Squid Game. This game isn't really that interesting, nothing real much happens, although it is pretty funny to see lots of people just being slapped several times over and I do like how at the end of the show 456 sees this happening again and you know realizes that this whole scenario is still happening for him. But is it S tier? Definitely not. Like, it's not really that interesting. It's just two people trying to hit two envelopes together. So not really that interesting. I'm going to say D tier. Like, it's not a proper game, so it was never really meant to be interesting. Next, we have Red Light, Green Light. Of course, the thing that's been on the promos, it's been on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of these social medias, because this is the thing that Netflix used to promote the show. It's of course in the first episode and it's a game that I'm sure you've all played but where I'm from we call it a different type of game but it's the same premise and of course it is so brutal and so good and so unexpected especially if you've never seen the game before. I absolutely love this and I think it's definitely S tier not only just because of that creepy doll who keeps on going red light green light which is insanely creepy but insanely funny. I just think this is a really great first game it gets rid of brutally half of the people who had already signed up and it basically shows you the stakes of what the games are going to be like it's a perfect one for a first game because not only does it get all of the characters like worried and realize oh this is what we're getting into but it's also a great idea from netflix because if it wasn't for me seeing this weird doll and this game online I probably would have never gone and watched this show. So it's a great promo and it definitely deserves to be in the S tier. Next we have Honeycomb. Now this one is, I don't think it's definitely S tier. Like it's not as good as Red Light Green Light. This one's kind of different to Red Light Green Light because this one's more like you're under pressure, intense pressure and you know, it, you can see all the characters getting really tense trying to cut out this honeycomb. Some of course have it way easier than others with the different types of shapes. And of course, 456 ends up choosing the umbrella, unlucky for him. It is really tense. It's not as exciting as Red Light Green Light, I'd say, but it is still really tense and you can feel like the tension throughout and seeing people just constantly struggle. And of course, he goes to the point where he's having to lick the honeycomb completely. So it does get really tense in areas. And of course, I could never imagine being in such a tense situation and then suddenly you're just seeing people being gradually shot around you. The only thing I'd say that's kind of a bit annoying about this one is that, of course, it was in the park setting. And I honestly thought before we were going to do the honeycomb, I thought we were going to have like a really cool game set in like a giant park. This one's still good, but I think I kind of like anticipated it would be something else. And then it was this and it was kind of a letdown, but it was still really good. I don't necessarily think it's A tier. I'm going to put it B tier. Next we have another one that isn't actually technically a game, but I'm going to class it as a game. And that's at the beginning of episode four, which is I think my favorite episode overall. And it's where the lights go pitch black and they realize that you can kill people at night and that will class as eliminations. Technically it's not a game as such, but then as the night goes on, the leaders at Squid Game basically just say, 
it is a game and they treat it as a game and it is brutal. It reminds me of, if any of you have ever seen Doctor Who, it reminds me of the Weeping Angels in Doctor Who because of course of all the flashing lights and it goes on for quite a while. I could not imagine being in that situation where you've got hundreds of people trying to kill you while the lights are flashing on and off, on and off and it creates this creepy atmosphere that I love. Plus it turns into kind of like a battle royale, kind of like the Hunger Games which I really like and I just think it's really brutal and I absolutely love how it kind of began episode four and I think it was just really big excitement. I think it is up there with red light, green light. I'm not sure which one is better, whether red light, green light's better or whether the night one is better, but they're basically the same for me. I just really love the excitement these ones bring you. Next we have game number three, Tug of War. Now this one is of course where all of the characters have to be put in teams of 10 and it basically looks like all of the main characters that we've grown to love are outnumbered because they're against a bunch of very, very strong people and they're all pretty weak. But what I do love about this is the technique they use from the old man of leaning back, of maybe moving forward a bit to try and let people take them off their balance. I love this one simply because they get really creative of how these people are going to win against all of these really, really strong people. And I do like a bit of tug of war. Also, it's quite brutal when, you know, everyone just falls at the same time when they lose. So I kind of like that. I don't think it's S tier, but I don't think it's as uh, unexciting as Honeycomb. So I'm gonna put it in A tier. Next we have Marbles. Now this one isn't really like exciting, like everyone's dying, like red light, green light. It's not as tense as uh, Honeycomb, but it's more a game to just focus on the emotion because by this point, I think it's, episode five when Marbles happens. By this point, we've gotten so attached to all of these characters and the relationships that they've built with each other that this one really tests your hard strings. Marbles isn't the funnest watch ever. And I think when it's kind of just the episodes in Squid Game where it's just them talking for ages and ages, it can get a bit repetitive, it can get a bit boring. And I think Marbles unfortunately falls into that trap, but it is a really good character development one. And the ending is so, so emotional. Didn't everyone get an emotional when Ollie 199 ended up dying? It was brutal. And we get to see kind of like the shift of 218 where he decides to change from being kind of like a team player to more like, this is all about me. I'm going to be out for myself. And it was so heartbreaking to see at the end 199 with the stones in his back and realizing he'd been tricked by one of his closest friends who we'd seen them grow over these past few episodes. It was just really, really heartbreaking. Of course, the old man, him dying kind of of course back then in episode five when marbles was happening it was really emotional when he was dying and then of course 240 and 67's relationship with each other i really did like that relationship however i just wasn't attached to 240 as well but it was quite sad when she died as well so i think marbles isn't exactly exciting and i really love the games that are really really exciting it did get slightly boring at times, but it definitely was emotional. So for that reason, I'm going to put it in B tier. You'll notice a trend. I kind of just prefer the more brutal ones. That's just something I like. You guys might disagree with me. These ones are kind of similar, whereas the ones in B tier are also kind of similar. So I like more action, exciting things. Next, we have the Glass Bridge, which I think is a really inventive game. I've never heard of this type of game being played before. I'm not sure whether it was created just for Squid Game or it is a child's game that is being adapted for Squid Game. But this one is brutal because, of course, at the beginning, we've got 456 worrying for a good few minutes of which one he's going to choose. And thank goodness he ended up choosing the last player. But I do like how this one basically gets rid of all of the other people apart from the finalists. It's a great one because you realize that if you're at the front, you're gonna die. Like there is no way you're gonna die. I'm pretty sure someone does the maths in the episode and they realize that the percentage chance of them crossing without hitting a glass that will break 
is so incredibly low that only the last few people are going to make it. I also like this one because the VIPs are watching and of course we've got that tense scene between the VIP and the spy, but I really do like this one. For that reason, I think it's going to go in S tier. I wouldn't say it's as good as these other two, but I think it's better than Tug of War. And I just love the bit where 212 finally gets her revenge on 101 and takes him down with her. That part is kind of like a nice ending to their story. Next we have, you could call this a game, I'm calling this a game, it's technically not. It's a bit where the three finalists are given the steaks and then at the end, once they've eaten their dinner, they're left with just the steak knives. And I'm saying this is a game because at the end, unfortunately, 67 is brutally murdered by 218. And I just love this game because of the horror and the depression that we see in 456's eyes when he realizes that his closest friend has just killed his other closest friend and it also gives you a chance to see again how brutal this game really is so for that reason i don't think it's as good as all these because again it's just someone killing someone else with a knife but i'm classing it as a game i think it's probably high b tier and finally, we have Squid Game, the final game between 218 and 456. This is tense. Of course, at the very beginning in the prologue, we kind of got a bit to know about what Squid Game is if you don't know what it is already. And of course, this ended things off between 218 and 456. And the emotion between them where you've seen these two have been basically closest friends with each other from episode one you now get to see how they've grown and how they basically ended up turning on each other. But I love at the end how 218 basically kind of just sacrifices himself so that 456 can win. And it's really emotional at the end after this game when 456 goes back to 218's mother and it's just really, really sad. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be red light, green light because again, like I'm saying, that one was basically made so that people could go and watch it because it was so, so good. I don't think it's S tier, but I think it is high A tier just because of the emotion it brings. But anyway, guys, that is the end of our Squid Game Games tier list. What did you guys think? Let me know all your thoughts down below in the comments and where you would rank your favorite Squid Game game that they did. Let me know all your thoughts down below. And as always, we've been here on Gate of Theories. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.